makes me really happy to see, you know, when these uh, like these little babies crash CNN interviews and BBC interviews. <laughs> and you, you and you're like, hey, me too. You know, you get you get to see the reality, right? Uh, sometimes I think we uh, we um, brush it under the rug, we cover it up, we don't want to. Uh, but I, I think people are are not only more accepting, but more appreciative of the real. Mm. Well, I think that's probably always been true. You think so? I do. I th I think that it's it's we have this idea that the image is what sells, and 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 I mean maybe I mean up to a point, but the you, you know people connect to to real people. I mean they always have. Yeah. You know we recognize ourselves in others, and then that's that that sort of connects us at a different level than wow that's impressive. <laughs> yeah, and I, I'm laughing right now because uh, I guess this is also going on a podcast, right, Michael? So people yeah. who, who can't see, you had a wonderful wagging tail behind you. Yes, no, I know. <laughs> no, I've, got a, I've got a dog with his head in my lap right now. Something uh, exciting is happening in the background here. What's, what's we were surprised guests. <laughs> oh my goodness gracious. Yes. <laughs> Yes. You look very surprised to be here. Yes, I, I think he's a, he's a little baffled. He's a little, well. This is episode eighteen, by the way. If you're listening at home, of might help can't hurt. And for those of you listening on the podcast, we've just had a little visitor. He's he's not very big at all. <laughs> how old is he now? Archer, how old are you going to be? Eleven months tomorrow. Eleven months. Whoa. And we have yet another visitor. If you see this guy. Oh my goodness, there's, there's <laughs> dogs and babies and everything. It's yeah. very exciting. This is what I get for working from home right now. Hey, bud. Have you been in a lot of meetings? <laughs> <laughs> All like this. <laughs> All right, off you go, buddy. Off you go. Oh. Mommy's gonna go live. Mommy is live. She Your live. Mommy is live. Like this, is, is, live. this is real life. <laughs> I'm just curious, kind of, what you've been saying to people right now that might help them get in touch more with with their true essence, or you know, help them through this time. Well, I I like to think I say it nicer than this, but the 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 main thing that I say is calm the hell down. <laughs> <laughs> like because honestly, until you do that, people yeah. don't want to calm down until they figured it out. But you can't figure anything out when you're spinning. I mean, it's like playing, you, you know, pin the tail on the donkey and spinning more and more and more. And mm -hmm. going, why am I finding it so hard to find the donkey's butt to stick the tail? <laughs> it's like, well, come on, you got to stop right. spinning, and then you can take a look, and then you can see where can I connect. Where, where, where can, you know, it's a weird analogy. It's becoming weirder. Like, you know, <laughs> can I stick my tail on? But I have a point. You, you, you know, that, so that's the first thing is for people to really see mm. we genuinely don't make better decisions when we're freaking ourselves out. And, and people know that instinctively. And so once they've calmed down enough to go, of course that's true they tend to actually settle down the rest of the way. And you know, the simplest way I think I've put it with anyone is, you know, you probably don't want to start your business strategy by scaring the shit out of yourself. And then going, okay, go, creative idea. <laughs> right, now once people settle down, kind of like you were saying with, well, what else, you, you know, what, what, what else have you got on the back burner? What, what, what else is there? Often stuff comes to mind almost immediately that they can do. Yeah. That. So there, there are very few people that I work with who shouldn't be in business because they know nothing about it. Like most people, actually, there's a reason they're running their business. They, they, they know something about it. Right. And when they've got access to their full brain and wisdom and insight and creativity and they look at it, They've got a lot and and they very quickly see, oh, you know what? This is something we can implement immediately. And so it's the difference where it's like, I don't know if people have come to you and got, done this, but where they go, I need 100,000 Instagram followers tomorrow. <laughs> well, that's probably not a good short-term project, Yeah. right? But when you start to see, okay, what do we need to do this week? Mm -hmm. What's been interesting is watching clients' timeframes change. 
So a lot of clients live six months into the future, four years into the future, yep. in the future, and are afraid that if they get totally present, they'll lose yep. growth. And it's actually the opposite in, in my experience, that the more people really sit with what's in front of them, the more it sets them up for what might be in front of them three months down line, six months down line, one year down line. And I mean, I've seen it, like we had it personally, where, where, where we had a, a, a growth target this year that we've already hit, yeah. totally not in any way we planned, but simply by responding week by week to what was coming in, it, it, it just, this long-term setup that we thought was gonna be this epic two-year project <sighs> happened. And it really came out of getting out of the future, getting right. out of the past, getting present, and going, okay, what's in front of me? And and I always say this, but you know, we're really good at eating what's on our plate. We're really bad at eating what was on our plate yesterday. <laughs> we're really bad at eating what we think is gonna be on our plate tomorrow. Like we're not made for that. We're made for what's on our plate today. And when people stop being scared of that actually it's really fun like they remember why they do it like they remember the the thrill of actually helping people and and actually growing from that and actually being rewarded for that yeah. and it's that's why people most people do it I, I love that you said that, Michael, and I think what's really fascinating too is one of the things that we work with our clients on is, you know, I was telling the team yesterday, uh, internally, it was having a conversation. I said, well, so much of what we do is moment management. You know, these long five-year, 10-year marketing plans, they don't work. I mean, you, know, you don't even know where you're going to be six months. Any company that's got a five-year marketing plan, boy, I w <laughs> you know, I, I'm quite impressed that you know the future because things just change so quickly where I think what's working so well in this environment is a rapid change, right? Things that produce dramatic results that you can do uh, very quickly in, in sort of taking advantage of things moment to moment. And so with like COVID, we saw so many of our clients actually have amazing success, hit their goals, go past it because they were very much, like you said, you know, leveraging that moment, being in the present, not saying, what can we do tomorrow? Not, ah, what did we do yesterday? What can we do right now? What what makes sense? And so I, I'll forever be grateful. And I know that the clients feel good about it, that, you know, when I approach them, they say, this is your moment. Here's why you have to do this. And here's why you have to do this now. And they listen and they say, ah, okay, I get it. You know, these are the clients that, that get ahead. It's I always tell people we have this other problem right now, of like the wait and see. You know, I'm gonna wait and see the wait and see game. And it's like, I, you know, I don't know what you're waiting for. I don't know what you're waiting to see. But um, I think if you constantly w play that game, it can be very, not just disruptive, but very destructive to your business because you're you're constantly waiting on other factors. You're constantly trying to wait to perfect that timing, right? Um, yeah. Where it's much better to say, what do we have right now? What can we use to our advantage? There's so many conversations happening in, in the media, for example. Um, you know, we have one client and i thought this was fascinating they do uh, medical training right medical training for professionals like injecting botox and things like that and they've always of course done it physically because they usually need physical people to test things on and, and do that and we were able to take all of that and move it completely remote we had the first we had the first couple of classes really successful pilot programs to see you know how do students respond uh, to the point where we could send you know literally send dummies to their homes with saline injections that they could practice and you know, just like we're doing right now you the doctor could give feedback you know the class could watch the technique could give feedback and so in in some ways it's so great because it's like you're staying home why not get better right why not build that muscle why not do you have two dogs i do yes the, so <laughs> my dog is pepper and the black dog is salt you know, of but course. Of course. Of you know. course. You know, I saw a white tail and now I just saw a black tail and I was like, mm. yeah. no, I know. Um, which funnily, we have uh, one uh, um, Samoid, which is the white fluffy dog. I don't know if you guys saw it briefly. And we're getting another puppy this week because we're nuts like this. So this puppy is three months old. Uh, hence the barking and the, and the playful, you know, I can't, there's only so much you can do to control a puppy. And we're getting a second puppy this week 
a giant schnauzer. We love giant schnauzers. Uh, we lost our dear giant schnauzer uh, a month ago. We're still broken hearted over it. And we got the nephew, his nephew. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. So, yeah, and he's coming from California. We're really excited. And so we're going to have similar, a white and a black doggy. And uh, just, you know, we, we just love the giants. And we're going to have two big dogs and a baby and a business. Yeah, we're, we're a little nuts around here. <laughs> well, but like that is, to me, speaks to the fun of being responsive mm-hmm. as opposed to trying to control the future. Right. Like it is so much less pressure to respond to, like, you know, that phrase necessity is the mother of invention. Yes. So clearly most people have experiences of that, but what they don't get is that the reason necessity is the mother of invention is because of necessity, you got really present with what is of necessity. You stopped wishing uh it, it oh i wish this hadn't happened or i wish i did it's like you still probably wish that but it's like I, whatever i don't have time to wish that i need to pay attention mm-hmm. i need to look at what's going on around me yeah. and i need to tap into whatever creative potential i've got because otherwise we're going down well you can do that anytime you don't have to wait for COVID. You don't have to wait for a challenge to your business. You don't have to wait for it. You can you can literally show up that way to work every day. 